Bukonian Kabataan Federation President, Honorable Jeff Spore Quizon. Liga ng mga Barangay President, Honorable Nilo Gonzaga. Sangguniang Bayan Member, Honorable Resurrection Capanas. SB Member, Honorable Alma Orfano. SB Member, Honorable Rudy Kugay. SB Member, Honorable Alan Espinosa. SB Member, Honorable Minerva Bulawit. SB Member, Honorable Fernando Aceo. SB Member, Honorable Richie Cruz. SB Member, Honorable Brenson Cabintoy. Ladies and gentlemen, to complete the Municipal Vice Mayor, Honorable Miguel George Stein. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Itaas ang kanang kamay sa ayos ng panunumpa. Panunumpa ng katapatan sa watawat. Ako ay Pilipino. Buong katapatang nanunumpa sa watawat ng Pilipinas at sa bansang kanyang sinasagisan na may damal, katarungan at kalayaan na pinakikilos ng samayan ng makajos, makakalikasan, makatao at makabansa. The chair declares the presence of a quorum. We will now come to the business of the day. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Floor Leader. This special session is especially called for the purpose of paving the way for the second state of the municipality, municipality address of Municipal Mayor Honorable Manuel Vicente M. Torres. Mr. Chairman, I move to suspend the rules of the Sangguniang Bayan 
to accommodate the appearance of the Honorable Mayor for his State of the Municipality address. Second. Second and Mas. Second. Okay, there is a motion by Honorable Cabintoy and seconded in Mas. Rules of the Sangguniang Bayan are hereby suspended to accommodate the appearance of the Honorable Mayor Manuel Vicente M. Torres and to give his State of the Municipality address. Motion is hereby granted. Mayor Matt Torres is hereby very much welcome and accommodated. In the meantime, let's take a five-minute recess to fetch the mayor. Honorable Minerva Bulawit, Honorable Alan Espinosa, Honorable Rudy Kugay are requested to fetch and escort the mayor. A lot has already been done, but this is just the beginning. Kananga has shifted from a simple community into a first-class municipality. But for Mayor Manuel Vicente M. Torres, he seeks for more. He seeks for change. He seeks for an improved Kananga. With his burning passion for service, geared by his dreams and hopes for a better tomorrow, he ventures for more actions, more than ever before. Words aren't enough to prove what he has done. So, let the people speak of what they see. Let the results of hard work express for itself. Then let it reveal the progress that he has started. Just in his first year in office, can you now testify for significant changes in Kananga? We request everyone to please stand as we welcome the father of Kananga, Honorable Mayor Manuel Vicente M. Torres. Vice Mayor Miguel Tan, Diga ng mga barangay, headed by our uh, uh, Cap Nilo Gonzaga, Department and Office Heads, School Heads, Kanaton Tanan mga Kananggahanon, Maayong Hapon. Progress is impossible without change. Even though change can be difficult, many times it's for the best. In just a year in the office, I can honestly say that I, uh, my vision for a better and a clearer Kananga has never been clearer. But in order to fully realize this dream, we have to make significant changes. Changes that sometimes push us beyond our comfort zones. The task at hand is difficult, but I am committed, I am determined, and I am persistent. Looking back, I am proud of how Kananga, how far Kananga has come from where it used to be. 
It's all because of everyone's cooperation, hard work, and dedication. I am grateful to the members of the Sangguniang Bayan, headed by Municipal Vice Mayor Miguel Tan, to the Liga ng Mga Barangays, to the department and office heads, and to all NGO employees for your commitment, dedication to our beloved municipality. Today, I humbly walk you through our accomplishments, our ongoing projects, and great plans for Kananga. Daghantag mga proyekto na og mga kalihukan sa sud lang sa usa ka tuig na haom sa atong napo ka mga prinsipyo. Let us start with our notable achievements under our first agenda, peace and order. In terms of achievements, we had a good start in the peace and order agenda. In just 100 days in office, an additional 10 barangays in Kananga have been declared by PDEA and PNP as drug cleared in October, followed by the 12 remaining barangays in December. In less than one year, Kananga is now declared as a drug cleared municipality. This is how effective our Kananga PNP officers headed by Police Major Ariel Salarda, uh, how effective they are. Where's uh, Major Salarda? Okay. Pakpaka na to, Major Salarda, batong PNP. Our PNP has now a challenging task in maintaining our drug-cleared municipality status. Tungod ni ini, magipasikto pa nato ato mga checkpoints, night patrols, o mas kipahugtan pa ang ilang kolaborasyon sa atong mga barangay officials. With regards to our low and moderate risk drug surrenderies who underwent drug assessment, they will also undergo the CBRP or the Community-Based Rehabilitation Program once this pandemic will ease out. Akong ipasigarbo kaninyo nga ang tanang empleyado sa munisipyo nga akong ipadrug test na 100% negative. May na lang. Ha? Pero karon tuiga, no? Di pasabot na negative na ito mga empleyado, magpadayon lang gihapunta o paubos sa tanang kawani sa LGU o drug testing. Doon na gigahin na 200,000 pesos para sa maong programa. Dili lang mga kawani sa LGU ang atong ipadrug test. Apil usab ang mga kawani sa BNP, BFP, AFP o ang atong mga barangay opisyales. We have also maintained an insurgency-free status, the close alliance and coordination with the Philippine Army's 93rd Infantry Battalion are the contributing factors. Lastly, we assure you that we will maintain our green zone status for the rest of the year. In relation to this, last June 23, 2020, our Municipal Peace and Order Council passed a resolution strongly supporting the passage of anti-terror bill, which was signed into law by our President Rodrigo Roa Duterte last July 3, 2020. Let's move forward to our next agenda, clean water, sanitation, and environment. Sa mayaging tuig, nagisgot ko nga ang problema sa tubig atong tutukan, paningkamutan, o gipalabi ang paninguha, nga mahimuan og solusyon. Mao gusto na ako ipahibaw kaninyo nga ang atong Kananga Water Filtration Gallery na human na og bidding og sugdan na karong simanaha. Siguro wa na ko makitaan na kanangahan na way ligo. No? Nakaligo na yun kanan. No, hopefully. This will be situated in Barangay Rizal's Matinao River. This 50 million project is donated by the national government. Of course, through the, of, uh, through the efforts of our very own Congresswoman, 4th District Representative, Honorable Lucy Torres Gomez. Dako gyud ang akong pasalamat sa atong kongresista nga iya gyud gibtutukan ang pagtabang sa Kananga aron ta mulambo ug ang madagan ang mga kananggahanon ug eksakto na water supply. Atong isunod paghisgot kung unsa na status sa atong solid waste management. Last year, the EMB, the DNR EMB Region 8 mandated us to close our open dump site. 
isip tubag sa ilang kamanduan ato nang nahamuan ang atong residual containment area or ang RCA na nanghimutang sa karaan natong dam site so hapsay hapsay na to further address this concern we purchased a lot in barangay tagaytay and this will be our sanitary landfill which is already EMB and MGB approved finally Kananga will have its own sanitary landfill in no time. In addition, our garbage collection has been on schedule. Mapasalamatun ko sa atong GSO sa pagkolekta sa mga basura o sa atong mga barangay officials sa pagbadayon o mintinar sa kalimpyo sa atong komunidad. Meanwhile, I would like to update you that we already have 10 cases of illegal sand and gravel extraction apprehensions. Through these apprehensions, we were able to confiscate an estimated total of 50 cubic meters of sand and gravel. Definitely, we will continue to monitor all kinds of illegal acts when it comes to sand and gravel extraction, or those who keep on damaging our rivers. Lastly, we have already finalized the plans and consultations for the construction of our municipal septage facility next year. Soon, pohon natay septage facility deha. Ha? Septage mo na usa sa atong tutukan, mo na mo kuha unya sa mga hugaw sa atong mga panimalay, no? Para compliant ta sa DMB, IMB o uh, sa DNR, no? Next topic will go to infrastructure. Infrastructure development is a vital component in economic growth. Since it is a key factor in development, I prioritize this agenda right away. We allocated a budget for our infra projects and have, uh, some have already been implemented. Let us start with our government and commercial center. This year, we were able to successfully purchase a lot in Barangay Libungao worth 30 million pesos taken from our local budget. Right now, we are already filling in materials on the land in preparation for the construction very soon. Our rural health unit we will build a bigger RHU beside the new government center. The DOH funded this project with a budget worth 10 million pesos. This would be a phase-by-phase -phase project that will be implemented before the year ends. To make the new government center in Barangay Libungao more accessible from Poblacion, we have planned to open and construct a new diversion road along San Vicente Road. The said road will also comply with the national mandate that tricycles should not be allowed to traverse national roads due to safety reasons, except if there is no alternative route. Next is our municipal wide street lighting. We will surely improve our street lighting at our national and municipal roads with a total budget of 20 million pesos for the energy, energy efficient and high tech street lights. Rest assured that Kananga will be brighter and safer all day and all night. Ang sunod natong problema ani mo ingon lagyod. Mayor, pag nga na street light kay mo abot sa mong balay. Hayag man kaayo. No? Our seat lights are not just ordinary light bulbs, but these are LED bulbs with smart connectivity feature. Dako na po na akong pasalamat sa atong congresswoman sa pagpuno og 10 million pesos na budget para ni aning street lighting project. And we allocated 10 million from our local funds, while the other 10 million is from the national government. Now for a total of 20 million pesos for the seat lighting project. Atong isunod ang atong merkado. Last year, the DILG issued a memorandum circular implementing the presidential directive to clear roads from illegal structures, and one of their assessments is to restructure the old market. This year, we already have completed the demolition of the old public market, which will become our temporary terminal for our PUJs and Habal Habal. At the same time, the vendors are transferred to a different nearby location while the construction is ongoing. Fruit stalls and food parks 
We have constructed newly equipped fruit stalls and food parks near the old market. These have provided better, cleaner, and uniform spaces for our fruit and uh, fruit and food vendors. Kita mo hapsay na. So di pa na mao ha? So good pa lang na. Huh? Next, our Freedom Park waiting shed. This historical landmark has been neglected for many years. Thus, this year, I instructed our municipal engineering office to repair it so that we can relieve those memories we had before in this Freedom Park. <laughs> our municipal slaughterhouse, this is one of our top income generating offices. So as promised, we are almost done with the renovations and it is likely to be completed this year. Next is the beautification of the Bagulungun River Project as part of our market beautification project. A river walk and flood control projects just at the back of our fruit stall and food park will be implemented next month. We aspire to revert the classification of the said river from type C to type A, meaning the water would be suitable for swimming, fishing, or human consumption. No. For the barangay level, our proposed plans for additional multi-purpose covered courts for the three barangays have already been approved. Barangay Santo Nino and Lunoy will have new covered courts, care of our governor, Mick Pitilia. <laughs> While Masarayao's covered court is from our local funds. We will also improve Barangay Rizal and Poblacion's GK covered courts. And this can serve as evacuation centers and as additional quarantine facilities for the LSIs and ROFs. For our fourth agenda, let us proceed to our discussion of our emergency response. I have to admit that the first year of my term is quite challenging because of the COVID-19 crisis. No leader is fully, uh, is fully prepared with the scope of this pandemic, yet this is the time to step up. It is important to lead with empathy and to strive for flexibility to prioritize health and well-being. Although it is tough to be at the head of this community at this time, I feel both lucky and blessed to be working with the best partners in government as well as in the private sector. I even had the pleasure to know several selfless individuals who are willing to volunteer and to help our LGU in this time of crisis. One of the reasons behind our success in maintaining a safe environment amidst this pandemic is the early creation of the COVID-19 task force during our regular meetings. We were able to plan strategic preventive measures, health protocols, and then implemented them right away. At the early stage of the outbreak, we immediately established our control checkpoints, then allocated a budget for COVID-19 emergency response. We also decided to realign our municipal funds to prioritize the urgent needs of COVID-19. Daghantag na sakripisyo na mga project, pero tungod aning COVID lagi, ato lang usang ipadaplin. No, kay magunsa unsa mga proyekto, mag mga daan, we are very grateful for the outcome of these sacrifices and prompt decision making because so far we are still on top of the situation. Let me present to you where these realigned funds went. Let us start with adequate supplies of PPEs for our health and rescue workers, sanitation of our municipal facilities offices, national and local roads, purchase of COVID-19 related equipment and materials like thermal scanners, sprayers, decontamination facility, lavatories, and many more. Preparation of isolation facilities at the hospital and the quarantine building at our Kananga National Senior High School and the municipal gym. Transportation for the frontliners and coordinated returnees. Free meals for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Murag huh? hotel accommodation ba? Para sa ato mga uh, LSI, no? O ROFs, no? 
hygiene kits, and free swab tests for properly coordinated returnees. Proper handling of COVID-19 disease patients and free burial services. And who could forget the nagbutang nato sa mapa, no? The one sack of rice plus the two dressed chickens for every kananggahanon family. We were able to give out, no, a total of 16,883 sets of one sacks of rice and two dressed chickens to 16,883 beneficiaries. During the distribution, I personally instructed our team na kinanlan, walay pilion sa pagpanghatag, every family should receive no matter who they are. Because no one gets left behind in Kananga. We also managed to allocate a total of 1 million pesos worth of allowances to our frontliners. And if we still have available, uh, available funds, we plan to allocate another budget for the hazard allowance for our health personnel and health workers. I also wish to highlight the great value of the services of our medical doctors, our health and emergency staff, they even go beyond their call of duty. Therefore, we salute you guys. <laughs> Dr. Sharon Awit. Dr. Mylene Talde. Dr. Adrian Bragat. Mr. Dennis Ritulia. Atong Dreamboy, Mr. Manuel Garduque and all our frontliners. We recognize your heroic acts, thinking of others before yourselves. Again, kaninyong tanan, daghan kayong salamat. I am grateful to the 22nd Sangguniang Bayan, headed by Vice Mayor Miguel Tan and its members for their support and approval of the COVID-19 Task Force request. Kung unsa ka abtik inyo mayor, anak po ka abtik ato SB. Himo daig mga polisiya, approved dahil sa itong budget. Likewise to all 23 barangays for taking responsibilities related to this pandemic and making initiatives to help us in putting up your barangay isolation units for our LSIs and ROFs. Moreover, we established a 24-hour, 24-7 Kananga returning residence hotline and a centralized database system for our locally stranded individuals and returning overseas Filipinos spearheaded by my office. This aims to speed up the coordination between the LGU and the returnees and ultimately to avoid uncoordinated arrivals. Aside from the mentioned COVID-19 response, we have always been preparing for other emergency health situations that may occur. Last June 9, 2020, we received another brand new ambulance from DOH. Lastly, to strengthen our disaster mitigation and preparedness capacity, we purchased our new rescue boat with uh, life jackets, a brand new backhoe, and a CCTV cameras. These CCTV cameras near our major rivers can monitor the rise of the water level that may cause flooding. Also, we have our new extrication tools for vehicular accidents and collapse building. We are already halfway through. Dali ra, di ba? Pas pas ra. For good health and well-being, if you get to watch our page, you will see our health team conducting a short congratulatory party for our recoveries when they were released. Thank you for going the extra mile for our COVID recoveries. Thank you, Doc. Our latest reported co active COVID patients are, are, are isolated in our COVID-19 Ligta Center we already conducted contact tracings while all those close contacts were swabbed. They all have tested negative. 
No? So, salamat nun ta. Salamat na lang na negative. Ha? Kung wa, aw. Oh. Wa ta <laughs> So, all our LSIs and ROF returnees are properly monitored in our quarantine facilities. In fact, they are required to complete the 14 to 28 days quarantine period and some are required to undergo swab testing so no one will be left unchecked. For our immunization accomplishment, our municipal health office has done a good job. Last year, we reached a record high of 89% for our fully immunized children. While this year, we were able to immunize more than half of our target amidst the challenges of COVID-19. <laughs> Massive information dissemination has already been done for the third and fourth quarter immunization rounds. Overall, so far, we are on top of our war against COVID-19. With a stricter implementation of health protocols, new supply of medicines, and improved hospital facilities, we will rise to the occasion. Let's move to education and manpower. The present COVID-19 pandemic has affected the educational sector. Education, educators and parents have been forced to adapt and adjust to technology to ensure that learning continues for the kids. My administration supports the continuation of teaching and learning during this pandemic while ensuring the safety and welfare of all learners, teachers, and personnel of DepEd. During our local school board meetings, the Kananga school, school District Supervisors raised their concerns for the new class arrangements and modalities. In this connection, I have approved to allocate budget from the Special Education Fund to purchase four digital, digital duplicators, 62 copiers, 38 laptops and 33 pieces of one terabyte external drives, which amounts to 4.8 million pesos. All of this will be distributed to all the schools in Kananga. In addition to this, a two classroom school building worth 3.6 million pesos will be constructed later this year in Barangay Rizal Elementary School. A few months ago, we did a site inspection together with LGU or MOC for the project on rubberized track and field at the Kananga Central School. Soon, you will see yourself running around the oval. Okay. <laughs> mo na if nag-comply mo, niya mo ingon scheme cho na pwede na mo lumabas, pwede na mo mudagan sa oval, kung naan na ang oval. Okay, this is one of the projects we have to watch out for. Last year, our athletes from both elementary and high school departments from three districts were hailed again as champions in the congressional meet. For 15 straight years, we are the defending champions. We are also number one in different sports during the recent provincial athletic meet in swimming, football, gymnastics, and taekwondo. Ug tungod sa ilang kakugi, o gihatag nga pasidungog sa atong lungsod, atong kituman ang saad nga manghatag tag rubber shoes sa mga atleta, bisan wala madayon ang ibra karon to iga. To further help our students, we Im implemented DOLIS program called the Special Program for Employment of Students. We were able to fill the 40 available stats for students who work in the municipality for 20 days. Each applicant received a payment equivalent to the minimum wage with insurance benefits. Our seventh agenda is energy. As stated, we have conducted the bidding for the beautification of Bagalungun River Project, particularly the flood control and river walk this is a 10 million peso project with funds sourced uh, source from ER1-94 
As of the present, we have received a total of 4 million plus for the said flood control and river walk project. Once the remaining funds would be released to us by the geothermal companies, we will have the second phase for this project. Furthermore, the repair and extension of our hospital has been funded by the electric electrification fund of the ER 1-94, which was released to us last July. The construction is ongoing. Once it is completed, our bed capacity for our hospital would increase. In addition, we have already conducted the bidding for a procurement of a man lifter. Aside from its relevance to our municipal wide street lighting project, this can also be used for the pruning of trees as a precautionary measure during typhoons. The source of funds of the man lifter is the RW funds of ER 1 94. Let's have our tourism, trade, and investments. The tourism industry has also been massively affected by COVID-19. In fact, within a month of the pandemic, the first industry that was seriously affected is tourism. Despite these challenges, I am pleased to support some of uh, to report some of our progress. Thanks to our municipal tourism officer, see Ms. April Tanweko. Salamat day. Who, like Mulan, is loyal, brave, and true. <laughs> Who is very hands-on in everything she does. In fact, she is in charge of our Soma today. Again. <laughs> Salamat. Again, Dai. Through her initiatives last year, we were able to renovate our old municipal gym. She personally monitored the renovation. During our grandest historic 12-day fiesta celebration, we were able to showcase the best of Kananga, discovered and empowered our local talents, and brought back our sense of pride as Kanangahanons. Not only did it attract local and foreign in tourism to explore the beauty of our homeland, but it also has left an impressive mark on how our promising our municipality is, how vibrant the Kunangahanuns are, and how beautiful our culture really is. <laughs> Last June 17, 2020, we were able to still celebrate our we were able to celebrate our 70th founding anniversary despite the many limitations and restrictions due to this pandemic. We have showcased the Kananga's founding anniversary on a live online celebration that was highly successful and widely viewed. For the, first, for the very first time in 70 years, we were able to formally re recognize the seven most outstanding Kanangahanons who truly have brought honor and pride to Kananga. We have also managed to give recognitions to three of the most resilient civil society organizations and showcase the six most promising farm tourism in our municipality. Speaking of farm tourism, the country is now exploring another fast growing segment, the agri-tourism. Nowadays, many people are looking for an escape from the hustle and bustle of city life to get back to nature, resulting in agri-tourism destinations. This will give more livelihood opportunities to our local farmers. Farm plus tourism equals fun. Together with our agriculture office and our tourism officer, we will organize and empower our, promising, our most promising farms because it's more farms and fun in Kananga. In addition to our search for our Kananga's best delicacies, we were able to assist a lot of startup entrepreneurs in rebranding their products and promoting their business to increase their sales. No? Timing rapod na nag-COVID, at least online, makabaligya sila atong na-market ilang mga produkto 
proud ta nakananggahan no na diri himo as kanangga katong mga produktuha no To further boost our tourism and establish our distinct identity, we started conducting a cultural mapping of the municipality. We have already started last March, but due to the pandemic, we had to postpone it. But by next year, when everything is back to normal, I'm very confident that we can have one of the most talked about festivals in this country. Earlier this year, we already had a plan to get uh, uh, to set up our own Pasalubong Center. But due to the current situation, we had to postpone it again. Rest assured, we'll push through with this when everything is better. In fact, this time, we, are, we have already decided to put it in a better location. Our Pasalubong Center will now be situated in our new government center. We will also have our one town, one product soon. This is a DTI program to level up products and services of our micro, small, and medium scale enterprises. This will help us to determine, support, and promote our culturally rooted products where we can, uh, where we can be truly known for. Exciting, right? Our second to the last agenda is agriculture. Agriculture in Kananga is an essential industry in our community. Our economic activity has always been concentrated in agriculture. I also believe that farmers are among the heroes during this pandemic. They are rising to the occasion to ensure that food is still being grown. Therefore, it is also the best time for the government to support and empower our farmers. This year, we have increased our efforts to equip our farmers with the new farming techniques, organic fertilizer production, and urban gardening training. We have given them rice and farm mechanism trainings in partnership with our farms field schools, TESTA, and the Department of Agriculture. Last February, the LGU Kananga signed a memorandum of agreement with the Office of the Vice President's Angat Buhay Project and turned over farm inputs and machineries to the three farmer associations. Also, through the Municipal Agriculture Office, we have given inbred and hybrid seeds to the 23 barangays. We were able to distribute different financial assistance to farmers, such as the financial subsidy for rice farmers insurances from the Department of Agriculture and Philippine Crop Insurance Corporation. Atong tabangan makahatag usab na makahatag usab kita og infra support sa mga sa mga konkreto nga dalan nga gitawag og farm to market roads, irrigation sa atong mga kahumayan og uban pang mapahimustan sa atong mga maguma. My ad administration will do its best to help enhance resiliency, sustainability, and productivity of the agricultural sector. And for our last agenda, we have our good governance and revenue generation. Good governance has to be built on the quality of leaders and its people to ensure the quality of the citizens. Therefore, in my administration, we value our employees' excellent performance and dedication to service. In line with this, we have promoted a new department head, an engineer from the Municipal Engineering Office, and a midwife. I am certain that we have made the right decision in their promotions because of their service, skills, and competency. Again, congratulations, Nino. <laughs> Furthermore, it's our aim to make our municipal services more accessible to the barangays. Therefore, we have created the Municipal Hall on Wheels. As soon as, it, as, soon as it is generally safe to push through with this initiative, then we will start immediately. Moreover, we were able to successfully distribute our PWD and senior citizens' social pensions. 
social so SAP or the social amelioration program and left out families financial assistance. The Dolis Tupad project was also implemented. We had about 926 participants who qualified for the program. Another assistance we executed was the assistance to individuals in crisis situations of DSWD. Both, national, both were national projects and were in coordination with the office of our Congresswoman Lucy Torres Gomez. Ugalang sa atong mga pinalanggang senior citizens, sugod karon tuiga, atong gipaubsan ang edad sa makadawat sa birthday cash gift sa senior citizens. Kaniyad to, si Tinta Anyos pataas ra ang makadawat. Karon, magsugod na sa edad na sa isinta isingko Anyos pataas. Kini gamay lang ni napahalipay pero naginaot ko unta makahatag ni Upahiyom sa ilang adlaw na tawhan. Furthermore, we have already started the development of our household management system. This will improve our database of all the families which will aid us in being more systematic during distributions and in tracking down those who are living in hazard-prone areas during calamities. For transparency, I would like to present the revenue collection of this municipality. Good news! There is a significant increase in our revenue collection for the year 2020. In our comparative study as of June 30, 2020, there is a rise from the actual collection of our real property taxes, business taxes, fees, and charges. Able to increase our collections through the right delivery of business renewal and permit services and strict implementation of our local revenue code. Moreover, we had successful negotiations between LGU and the geothermal companies for payment of their real property tax directly to our LGU. This will greatly speed up the turnover of proceeds or shares to the barangays concerned. On the other hand, income from economic enterprise collection is lesser this year. This is because part of our income from economic enterprises were collections from the public market, slaughterhouse, and water, waterwork systems, so system operations, which are greatly affected by this pandemic. Pero dili lang taang ay mag-uol ni ini kaysa sunod tuig, mabawi siguro ta, or in the next few years. Let's end this on a good note. No? All job order employees have received a salary increase that already started last July. For the longest time, but anon pa siguro in really add to, mauragya po ng sweldo sa itong JO. But the increase only happened during my administration. We have increased the salaries from 200 pesos to 250 per day. So good lang usat tadi ha. Kaya mo po na pangitaag pundo, basig mapunan pa day next year. No? Pero hopefully, makatabang na ni sa ila. No? When we began this journey a year ago, the challenges facing our municipality were overwhelming. We knew that the work would not be easy. But because of your trust, cooperation, and with God's grace, we have made considerable progress and great changes in just a short period of time. The progress we have made in Kananga is just the beginning. I am confident that we can do so much more. We can ca maximize Kananga's enormous potentials. Our present challenges are nothing compared to our great possibilities. We will continue to keep our municipality beautiful and a safe place to live in. It is my vision to make you proudly say that Kananga is your home. 
ato ipadayon ang nindot natong nasugdan guberno nga epektibo matinudanon ug kinasingkasing na serbisyo As long as I am your mayor, you will always get the best and right kind of service from this government. Matagamtaman ninyo kanunay ang timos o tinunay na penerbisyo sa akong administrasyon. Serbisyo dili pamulitiko. Dagang salamat and may God bless Kananga. Ladies and gentlemen, the state of the Minister's property address by the mayor. Mayor Matt Torres, atong amahan sa lungsod, ang kalambuan, ang kausaban, ug ang kauswagan sa kananga. Since the start of his leadership, the municipality moved forward and continues to soar higher to a better community, to a more progressive economy and promotes fairer service to the people. His journey at the start of the year wasn't easy. But he never gave up. He never lost hope. He never failed to listen and answer the cries of the Kanangahanon. Without any hesitations, he fulfilled his promise he made to the people and constantly committed to be of service to all. Now, Kananga is on its way to the limelight and to the place he envisioned to where it should be. Ladies and gentlemen, the father of Kananga, Honorable Manuel Vicente Matt Torres, the man behind Kananga's fast development since 2019. Magpadayon ang mat tinud anong serbisyong alang sa mat tahong nga Kananga. To Local Government Unit of Kananga, 22nd Sangguniang Bayan Members. Soma Executive Committee, April Tanueco, Execom Chairperson. Salamat, Mayor Matt Torres. Ang imong servisyo, dilig lang sa pipila ka mga tao, kung dilig sa tibuok ka nanda. Salamat ka ayo, Mayor Matt Torres, sa kausaban na among nasinati. Huwag ko nang pungubang ako ng kadaumay. Wala ko'y design din pa nang mugo lang po. Sige ni Hatag sa kong kusog. Salamat sa atong mayor. Na star-star sa ko ni Mayor Kim Kay. Ganun pa sa na ako sila nakitaan. Sige kong practice. Usay ako yung istorya pag-market. Music